Hey everyone, Joe here. Today we're going to be taking a step back and focusing on some of the basics in Lightroom. I know there are many users out there who are new to Lightroom 6 and Lightroom CC and may not fully understand a lot of the basic features like importing files, editing files, and exporting them. So I'm going to do a three part series. The first video today will be on importing files and managing them. Next week's video will follow up with us discussing the develop module and a lot of the tools found in the develop module. Then a third video will follow the week after while I ex uh, discuss exporting files and the different uh, image formats that you can use. So let's get started here and I've already got my SD card you know, put in the computer. So. You can use your SD card or you can connect your camera via the USB port to import your files. Over here in the corner, if you don't have the dialog screen pop up, you know, letting you know to import files, there is an import button. So I am going to click on import. Okay. Now we have our devices listed over here. I have Joe Jackson's iPhone. That's my phone. And we have EOS Digital. That is where my SD uh, card is. That is my SD card. And these are the files I will be importing. Okay. Now you can see all my files are selected here. Now I want to go discuss some of the options at the top. We have copy as DNG, which is digital negative. We have copy, which is the option I have chosen. We have move, which is uh, highlighted. So it's not an option at the moment, but I'll explain it. As well as add. Add is also not highlighted at the moment, so it's not an option, but I'll explain it for when you do have the option to use those. Okay, let's first discuss copy as DND, DNG. Now, digital negative is a open source, open format that many applications do use. Now, there's a benefit to using this and a small, you know, none benefit. <laughs> well, uh, how can you say a uh, con to it? Now, the con is that the computer will actually have to convert the uh, camera raw files to digital negative. It doesn't take very long, but if you have a large amount of files, it can take a little bit longer. If you have a slower computer, it might be a concern. But, however, digital negative ensures that if you import your files, they can be used across multiple platforms. And also, just for, you know, say, for example, Canon went out of business next week. You can uh, continue to get support for all those digital negative files, which I don't have the option chosen because it just takes a bit longer. And I, re I prefer copy because I know Canon's not going out of business next week. Okay. Now, copy will take them off. And, but I'll leave a copy on your SD card and will copy them over to your destination of over here. Now you see on the side here, Mac external and have extras photography with a lot of different, you know, subfolders in there. Now, when I copy them, it will move them over to this location, but a copy will in fact still remain on the SD card. The same goes for copy as DNG and regular copy. So after I've imported my files, there are still remaining files on the disk. Okay, you have the option called move. Now, like I said, the option isn't available at the moment, but if you could use move, what move will do was take them off point A, which would be the SD card, and put them over here in my des destination, which is the Mac external hard drive, but it will remove them from the SD card when completed. That is moving. Now you have add. Add will take them from your location add the information of those files to Lightroom's library. However, it would not physically move the file. Now I'm going to explain move and add, uh, add a little bit more in particular here, a little bit more. For example, you have some files on a hard drive. You don't want to put them on your computer, but you do want to use them in Lightroom. The quickest way is to simply choose add. That's when you will have the option to use it. It will add the, those files and their current location to Lightroom's uh, catalog so you can use them 
uh, do editing and changes to them and export them. However, they will still remain on your external hard drive. So I hope that explains those a little bit better for you. Let's go over here to file handling. Okay, we have a few options here. Uh, build smart previews. It will build smart previews, uh, but if you don't want every file to have a, uh, a smart preview built, you, know, you can leave that unchecked. So I'll leave mine unchecked. Now I do have the option to don't import suspected duplicates. So if you use the SD card frequently uh, and forget to erase it or format it, when you go to take new, new photos and stuff and put them into the computer, it will say, hey, half those photos already uh, been imported. So it automatically gray those out so you don't have to re-import them a second time. Okay, now they have the option here to make a second copy too. This is a great option for those who want to keep, say, uh, files on an external uh, RAID device as a backup reason. Now, I don't use this because I use Time Machine and I back up all my files to DVDs on a regular basis. So I'm pretty much covered. I don't need that one. You can also have Add to Collection. Add will add up to Collection, and I'll show you Collections here in a minute. Now, I don't have that uh, option shows because I take many different types of photos and stuff. But it is an option for somebody wanting it. Now, if I click it, you'll have the option to add to which collect, uh, collection down here. But, like I said, I'm not using it at the moment. Okay, now we have file renaming. Now, mine has uh, option for rename files. And I do this for a few reasons. And I'll edit mine and show you. Okay, I have my custom text. I have my date. And I have my file name. So therefore, it imports them in, it uh, keeps them in date and file name order, so it's easy for me to keep up with them. Okay. Then let's go to apply during import. Now, if you want to say, for example, if you ran a portrait studio, you can have it set to automatically add your specific preset to each photo as it's importing in. I actually have mine chose to none because as you can see from the import here there's no telling what I might take a photo of, uh, photo of next so it's not a good option for me so I have mine turned off and the same goes for metadata you never know what I'm gonna take a photo of so there's no sense me applying an arbitrary you know keyword to it or anything now let's go over here to destination now you can have it put the subfolder which is what I'm gonna have done, have tutorial listed already. Now I'm gonna have mine organized by date and by date format. Okay, as you can see into subfolder, I have Exodus Photography listed. It will then drop it down to another folder, tutorial, put it in 2015, then a subfolder 2015, July the 18th. So that's how I'm going to keep up with my folders. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and choose that. Like I said, you can name this anything you want. But that's what I've chosen for this tutorial, obviously. So let's click the import button down at the bottom. And all the ones that have checked up here, you know, will get imported, which is all of them. Okay, wonderful. All our files have been imported now. Now the first thing I'm going to show you is location you can see over here on the Mac external I have extras photography and I have tutorial 2015 and 2015 this is all the files that we have here also if you go up here to says where it says catalog you can see our files are also listed here as previous import this is normally the default location after it's imported stuff although you can find your files here so in case you have trouble finding all the files sometimes, you know, it gets a little buggy occasionally, I'll just go down here to where you actually import them to and find them in your uh, library here. Okay, now let's talk about collections. Now, for example, a little white dog here, his name is Cheeky. So I want to put Cheeky in a folder of her own or her own collection, okay? The files will still remain here in our subfolder. However, I can also have them in a small collection down here. So after I've selected all those folder uh, files, you know, images or photos, what you want to call them, 
let's click the little plus sign for new collection and I'm going to uh, click on create collection okay options are include selected photos which is what I want the other option is to make virtual copy so if we don't want to do any modifications to the originals you can create a virtual copy over to your collection now I'm going to explain virtual copy basically it is a file that really doesn't exist what it does is it creates a pretend copy of the original file so there's no increase in hard drive space and it keeps up all the information that you would do to the edits so you can actually create 15 different virtual copies of one file edit each one of them separately differently and it will not increase the, uh, any extra hard drive space all it does is actually put the information inside Lightroom's library as just different edits for that particular image so it's very helpful I use it quite often quite often and I highly recommend it now I am not going to click on create virtual copies for this one since I do want the originals and as far as set as target collection as an option I'm not even going to check it however I'm going to name up the top of here cheeky my mother-in-law named this poor white dog okay so now I've got the that named let's click create and you can find now we have 36 files over here under cheeky's collections okay now if we go back up here again we can find all 51 files up here also okay one more thing I want to show you is using stars and as far as attributes to be able to sort through your files let's say some of these files I really liked and I wanted to keep them or I like some better than other others and I want to sort through them so I am going to choose a few here just random ones you know this one caught my eye okay this one also caught my eye this one and maybe one of these lilies maybe one of these roses and maybe one of this white flower okay so I'll keep them all one star now we go up here to attribute and you can see I have a rating option here now I want to sort through all the ones that just gave one star and I click on it and there are all the ones that have at least one star are now shown so I really like that but maybe some of these are a lot better than others now that I've actually went through these and I want to say keep this one and maybe I really like you know this one as well so then I can also click on two stars and further you know go through my list here and decide which ones I want to keep which ones I like the most okay so that's a great way to be able to sort through and organize stuff okay so you also have the option for colors to help flat and also flags and this is just further ways to go through and determine you know sort through your files when you're making choices of which ones you want to actually print or not print or give to your client or which ones or misfocus or not just so you can sort through them better so i hope everybody you know finds this tutorial very helpful like I said, next week I will be going over the develop module. We'll be going over the tools. So a lot of people, you know, keep asking, hey, you're doing these tutorials, but I don't understand why you're doing something. Okay. Well, next week I'm going to go through and go over the tools individually. Uh, most of the basic ones that we use day to day, explain what they do and uh, why we use them for certain things. So I really hope you know you tune in for that video next week. I know Cheeky does too. <laughs> so if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber yet, be sure to subscribe. Subscribing's free. It's for you and lets you know when I release more videos. And until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.